Let's talk about Brock Purdy for a second. I wanted to give my kind of end of season evaluation on him and how I thought he played just this season as a whole, what I, you know, how I feel about him now and what that might mean going forward. I do think he did some very nice things and I'm going to start off with his athleticism. He was a playmaker, which we didn't really see a lot of in the 49ers offense when he wasn't out there. Garoppolo and Nick Mullins aren't exactly known for their elite scrambling ability, and we just didn't see much Trey Lance, so it was kind of unique to see in the 49ers uh, Shanahan offense seeing a guy who can move. Again, like, you know, uh, I'm not sure what the best example of this uh, was, because obviously RG3 was a great runner of the football, but he was more of a, you know, that was like what they built the offense around. That wasn't just him making plays. I don't know how much you like Hoyer to, sh Hoyer to Destroyer's scrambling ability, but it was just unique to see this kind of thing in this offense. Although you might be wondering, wait a second, Jackson, uh, this is zone coverage. I'm, how is he going to be able to scramble here in the goal line? How is he going to be able to make a play here? Especially when right there, we know that Anthony Nelson's about to create a press pressure on this play, so that's going to make things even tougher. We'll look at how when this play begins, the pressure does get created, but the offensive line towards Purdy's left did a good enough job blocking that he can run through there. However, now he has Devin White to worry about. But no worries, really, as he's able to just uh, juke out Devin White and get into the end zone for a touchdown. So, again, him being able to make plays, him being able to do this relatively consistently throughout this season was a definitive plus that we saw that not a lot of other quarterbacks possess. I think that's fair to say. This is a value that he has that Garoppolo did not. I also thought he just made some good throws. Like, what's going on here, it's going to actually be cover zero that Tampa Bay is in. So you have a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Christian McCaffrey is actually out wide right here. So, okay, the corner who's covering McCaffrey kind of thinking, you know, uh, it's a halfback. I don't have to pay him as much attention, which is uh, not the right play. You want to make sure that you're you know, paying him the attention that you should be paying him. Watch how when this play begins. I mean, you see how right here, there is a window to make this throw. The issue is that there's pressure coming. Purdy's going to have to throw this one off his back foot, and he is going to have to push it relatively far down the field. Again, we're not talking about a 60-yard bomb, but still, he wants to get it down the field, and he wants to get it down the field in a hurry. And as you see, Purdy pretty much puts this one exactly on the money. Again, the arm strength isn't going to wow you, but pretty much everything else is. I mean, he is able to make it accurate enough to get the ball down the field, and a lot of times those deep shots are less about you know, actual arm strength and more about timing and accuracy and those two things were definitely perfect on this play now i want to talk about a negative it's it's one negative i'm going to use i'm going to show one negative example but this was not just one time this happened there were times when he played like a rookie uh last year which if given the fact that this is rookie season not the end of the world you'll be okay with that uh but yeah on this play, it is going to be, I think, one of those mistakes, but an understandable rookie mistake. These are the things that I saw where it's going to be a, you know, again, on paper, you can see why this could be uh, a tough play. It's going to be just a three-man rush, both edge rushers for Tampa Bay or the players lined up as though they're edge rushers on this play for Tampa Bay will drop back into coverage, uh, which is just kind of more of a unique coverage that you don't see as much in college as it's just a three-man rush. The route you see over the middle is a route that if there was just one player over the middle would be a lot easier to throw to. But look at how one Purdy takes the snap. I'm assuming he saw it was Lamonte David on the other side of the field who dropped back into coverage. And I'm assuming he saw that and said, okay, well, he's not going to get into this play. I have a good window to make this throw. This is a play I should be able to make. Unfortunately, the other edge rusher, once again, Anthony Nelson, uh, he is back in coverage and in position to be able to make a play. Purdy makes the throw. It ends up getting intercepted. Uh, got called back due to a penalty that really did not affect the play. So uh, still put blame on Purdy, in my opinion, for this play. But also, you know, uh, no harm, no foul a little bit. But just in terms of, you know, using it as an example to display, there were some mistakes Purdy had this season. It was not a perfect season. He did at times play like a rookie. But at the same time, because he was a rookie, right? You expect him to play like a rookie. That's okay. That's allowed. As long as it wasn't completely like stunting your ability to win, and it most certainly wasn't, the reality is these mistakes weren't overly common, and I don't think happened a ton either. I think that they got less and less as the season went along, but were there these mistakes? Yeah, there were. Heading over here, I think one of the more impressive things about Purdy was his timing. I mean, his timing was just on, which, you know, in the Shanahan system, 
Timing is everything. I mean, in most systems, every, timing is everything, but especially in the Shanahan system. And that might be part of what I like about Purdy is, listen, I don't know how good Purdy would be in a different system. I don't really see why that matters. You don't care when you uh, you know, sign a guy, when you have a guy, how well they do in a system that you don't run. You care about how well they do in your current system, unless you think your head coach is going to get fired, which Shanahan obviously is not. But a play like this, all about timing. Kittle's going to eventually cut over the middle. So, so, you know, if you can time this perfectly, throw off a bit of anticipation and put it where, you know, right before Kittle cuts, but put it where he sh uh, is about to get to, could definitely be a big completion. Watch how right when this play begins. You see right here, this is the instant Kittle is starting to cut. Right now, he just now starts to cut over the middle. But if you look at Purdy, he is currently in the throwing motion. I mean, this is, when you talk about timing, this is timed perfectly. He is absolutely doing this exactly when you want it to be. I don't know. He's probably really good at those like Chuck E. Cheese games where you hit the button uh, right on the, where it's on the middle thing. Although apparently those are rigged. But anyways, you know what I mean? Uh, he's very good at timing. Watch as Purdy makes a perfect throw and they're able to pick up a big completion on that one. Also heading over here, he can make some tough throws too. Like the accuracy was there. You sure say what you want about the arm strength maybe lacking, but the accuracy was not. And this is a good example where it's going to be zone coverage and you have Jawan Jennings running about over the middle. Look at how one Purdy takes the snap. You're going to see that right here, there's a window to make this throw, but not an easy one. I mean, definitely, if there's a good defensive play, this could get batted down or intercepted. That's how you feel about it. So putting the ball where he wants to put it is going to be crucial because if you make a mistake in any direction, and it could really be devastating. But he does make a perfect throw, and they're able to pick up the uh, yardage there. Again, the reality is, most of the times Purdy was throwing the football, he had a window to throw to. I think that's totally reasonable to say, and a fair... I don't know, I guess you could say a fair critique, because that is something that, you know, if you're talking about like a college prospect who constantly has guys who are wide open you're, you're throwing to, you're going to at least add that additional context. Maybe say, hey, this could be why the numbers are better than maybe his play is, is because of this. I think that's reasonable, and I think that that's fair. But at the same time, how do we evaluate quarterbacks? We evaluate quarterbacks by how well do they do what they're trying to do? How well did they run their offense and how much were they, how good of a job did they do at moving the ball down the field? And Purdy did an incredible job at running a relatively easy offense. That's an impressive thing to do. And well, sure, you could say it's the 49ers. Purdy looked better than what, the little bit we saw from Trey Lance. Again, we saw very little, uh, small sample size. I'm not going to hold that against Lance, but still, Purdy looked better than him, and Purdy looked better than Garoppolo, who looked pretty good this year. Purdy was a very effective quarterback, and everyone has been saying that, well, now that he's injured, it's clearly Trey Lance's job. Maybe, but again, uh, you know, from what I understand, it says he's going to be about out about six months. That still means there's a chance he could be back for week one. Uh, maybe he won't be back for all the preseason and stuff, and maybe that's why Lance would get the job. But I don't think it's a guarantee that Lance gets the job necessarily. And the way I see it, if you're competing for a Super Bowl and what Purdy just did, I would be I would have a hard time going to somebody else because of how well he played and because of how well he runs the offense. At the end of the day, if I'm Shanahan, I want who runs the offense better. I don't care about anything else. I don't care about draft status, any of that. Who runs the offense better? Purdy did a very good job of running the offense, and I don't think Purdy is, uh, I don't think Purdy's going to, uh, you know, I don't think his career is done just yet. I don't think this was all that he was able to do. But that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching. If you like movies, check out my movie review channel. Every single movie title you see on the screen, I have a video about coming out within the next two weeks. I'm uploading a video every day for two weeks, so uh, definitely make sure you're subscribed there. The link is in the description below. I got some other stuff on there, too, some like breakdowns of certain scenes I like and things like that, so check it out.